finally sunny, so I have an excuse to wear my hat today. The birds are also very loud today, and I think it's because I haven't quite fed them yet. So I'm going to need to do that after I've done this video. So just have to be patient, my dear birds. So, hello spiritual individuals, and welcome back to another video, and also a very blessed belting to you all. I hope you're all having a marvellous magical day today. And for today's video, we're going to be, first of all, going through a lovely garden walk, as we do with every Sabbath, and noticing all the new life that is popping up at this time of year. We'll then move on to some seed sowing. So I've got an autumn propagator with little pots in it, and I'm going to be sowing some herbs and some flowers as well, so it's like a mixture of both. And then after that we'll be doing an altar change, and then finally we'll be finishing off with that divination reading, which I kind of first talked about it in my Samhain vlog, and then I was going to continue it on this vlog. So, without further ado, grab a cup of your favourite drink and relax. So the next audio was cat. I'm hearing a cat meow. I can't tell where she is. Okay. <laughs> She'll probably pop along asking for some attention later. It's my neighbour's cat. She she really loves getting petted. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Uh, where was I? Oh yes, the garden walk. <laughs> my mind wanders so much. I'm so sorry for that. But yes, the garden walk. I've noticed a whole load of bluebells this year and I was right in my old Stara vlog when I said that there would be quite a lot and there are, there are even more I think than last year as well as a lot more dandelions, some primroses and a lot more of them as well and my father and I, because I live with my father and I finally revealed to my audience basically who I live with, I, I live with my father mostly because uh, of money reasons, you know, everywhere is really expensive and I'm quite poor, but also because of medical reasons. And I won't go too much into detail with that because, you know, it's a bit of a boring story really. Maybe I'll explain it in a different video. <laughs> Things seem to be dropping today. I think, I think the birds are getting a little bit annoyed that I haven't fed them yet. They are though very patient compared to when you're feeding a cat, because I know when you feed a cat, because I used to have one, you opened up the, like, the tin can of cat food and they'd be racing towards it, but the birds are completely different. You open up the food, you pop it in the feeders, place it all up, and they'd actually wait until you've buggered off and then they'd, they'd eat it, and I thought, you are the most patient animals I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm completely distracted. I can see the bushy tail of the cat behind me. It is so cute. Its tail is so fluffy. Yes, you, my little fluff ball. There you go, you can hear her meow. <laughs> so yeah. And the birds. I think that's what they're warning me of as well. There's a cat nearby. Don't worry, she won't eat you. She's too lazy, really. So yeah, lovely garden walk. I mustn't get too distracted, I must actually pay attention to the video. So yeah, loads of bluebells, dandelions, primroses, loads of flowers like that. And I have to say actually, one of the colours that I've noticed is this peachy pinky colour, which I've seen in the maple and the piri piri plant that we have. And the maple is really blooming this year. And it is so beautiful. And what it does is it starts with this like reddish pink colour and then goes into a peachy yellow colour then a green and then it goes back to the peachy reddish colour. So it's like this circle of changing colours like on a colour wheel. But it is so beautiful and I love how you can tell what time of year it is by looking at the colour of the maple. It's just such a lovely way to connect with the time of year. And I've noticed that the colours of Beltane for me this year seem to be a lot of that peachy colour with the greens and the sort of yellowy colour. So outside I'm seeing a lot of brown and green but also that reddish pink colour and then to make it peachy it's like everything has been given this overtone of yellow to make it you know yellowy green or a peachy colour you know stuff like that 
that's it. It is really beautiful. And I'm afraid I'm not really matching the, the colours today. But I am wearing my green trousers, so that's a start. And I decided to go with my black hat today because I recently got it and I wanted an excuse to wear it because I thought the sun is out, I'm going to go outside, I want to wear my hat. <laughs> so yeah, and I will show little snippets of the garden as well and a little walk about before we pop back inside because it's a little bit quieter <laughs> as you can see or hear even and we'll do some seed sowing so I look forward to that I think they're arguing over territory let's go inside before it turns into a row <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. I tried to get a shot where you could see me and everything else on the floor, so hopefully you can see all that and hear me. So, yeah, this is the propagator. So, as you can see, we've got 24 of the little pots, and then we've got a tray underneath which will contain water because underneath each pot is this like big hole which is where the water will drain into and then that'll be like a tray of water and so yeah, they can absorb through that. We've got our packets of seeds here. So I've got about 18 or 16 or 17, yeah, 16, sorry. And I was going to fill only three rows because the back row, or rather the front row, is going to be sort of hanging over the edge of the windowsill for my kitchen windsill because I'm in the kitchen at the moment and uh, please do excuse the mess a little bit. Uh, I, I live in a house that is Studio Ghibli inspired <laughs> so it may look like a mess but it's actually an organised mess and it's never really bothered me anyway. I don't care if there's a bin incinerator next to me, it's not even used yet so, <laughs> so yeah. And also this will be the lid which will go on top and it will keep them all moist and steamy so they grow quicker essentially so and i've also got the little shovel it's actually a soup spoon which we don't use like ever so i will shovel in some soil and i'll fill those three rows and then pop some water in then the seeds and then shovel on a little bit more soil and then i'll spray the top and then to make sure that i know which is which and what I've put in each pot, I'm going to put that in my botanical book of shadows. So I don't think I've actually showed you my book of shadows or botanical one. So I actually, I bought a black sketchbook ages ago and I decided to paint it white. Why I didn't buy a white sketchbook, I do not know. <laughs> but I decided to paint it acrylic white and these are real rose petals and real rose leaves. So it's on the front and back. And I got a little bit creative and yeah. <laughs> so we've got the front, you probably can't see it very well, but yeah, my dear picture as well. And there's a couple more pages where I can write on. I'll probably show like a close up view afterwards. Um, right. I need a clean page. So yeah, I've basically just got loads of paint and went a little bit crazy with the design. Oh, and there's my skeleton leaf as well. Yeah. And that I'm just going to use for something else. So hopefully, hopefully I didn't miss a page. <laughs> Where's the page I want that gets stuck? Right, let's go on this page, I think. So, we need that, and we'll need a pencil, and I'm filling in these three rows, so there's about 24. So we just want a rough board. This is so I don't end up putting in the sticks, which I don't know if they are actually in these packets. I mean, usually you get sticks and then you can use like old lollipop sticks and stuff so 
you'd write on whatever plant was in there, but I decided to do it in my little book because I'm fancy like that. <laughs> Mostly because I don't actually like sticking anything in uh, the pots. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So, we need about six of these, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so about six, and then there'll be four going down, but I'm gonna do, I think, three going down. There, and then I can see uh, front row not in use, let's just say. Because I, I want the back rows to be filled so it doesn't lean forward and fall off my windowsill, because the windowsill is actually quite small, but it's the only place that I've got to put it, because it's quite a small windowsill. But I have always had this fantasy, basically, to have my own little herb and flower tray and then as I'm cooking I pick off a little leaf and then use it for cooking and it's just like a little magical fantasy of mine that I've been wanting to do and I finally get to do it so I'm really excited and let's see so we've got all of these seeds this actually probably will take a little bit longer than I thought uh, so we've got lavender Dill, chamomile, chervil, we've got sage, tarragon, chives, and then garlic chives as well, so it's very nice. Marjoram, I think, that's how you pronounce it? Yeah, marjoram. Uh, oregano, thyme, rosemary, coriander, parsley, basil, fennel and borage. So I hear the bees actually really like borage and we do have some in the garden because uh, a little while back I had these boxes of seeds which I think I talked about either in my Ingbolt vlog or my Ostara vlog. But I had these boxes of seeds, one for the front garden and one from the back garden and I basically just cleared away all of the rubbish, you know, like the leaves and the sticks and stones and then I sprinkled the seeds within the box after giving it a good shake and I gave it a good water and now I'm just hoping that things grow from that. Uh, so yeah, I'm waiting to see. They'll probably pop up I think in late June, early July. I'm not sure yet. That's going to be an annoying little fly there. <laughs> It's because I had the door open, so they fly in and now they can't find a way out. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Let's just write down... I think I have 16 here, but I'm going to use 18 pots. So I might do the extra ones as lavender, because I really love lavender. So I'm going to have... I think the lavender should be closest to the window because if the bees fly in, they can have a little bit and that'd be really nice for them. So yeah, I think those two will be lavender. And I think the borage should be here as well, because the bees really like that. And I want to put them all in their own separate boxes as well, so they don't overtake each other. I think fennel probably go at the side, in the middle maybe, or in front, I don't know. Uh, let's do basil here, and do parsley, I think maybe next to it. Sorry if this is a little bit boring. <laughs> uh, coriander, I'm also trying to make this video a little bit longer. Because some of my videos lately have been a bit short and I don't know if you prefer longer videos or shorter videos let me know in the comments that, or if you like a mixture of both uh, Rosemary I think will go next to the lavender to remind me to pop them outside in their own pots when they get ridiculously big <laughs> and I think the time always seems to struggle I hear from other people so I might put that next to the borage just so it gets plenty of 
sunlight. Uh, oregano will go here because I want to put the herbs as close to me as possible, even though they're all kind of herbs. <laughs> Marjoram, I think, will go here. We actually have loads of fennel in the garden. So <laughs> I'm debating whether to actually plant that, but I don't know. I think, I think it'd be nice. The chives will go here as well. They're a nice garlicky one as well, because I like garlic. And tarragon can go here. Ah, sage. That's the one I'm looking for. And then dill here. Ah, and chamomile. I can't wait to put that into teas. And chervil. Chervil, I think. Anyway, right, that's all the leaves. And then you need to remember that this is the window. And then that will be going down like that. Just put these to the side. Okay, so I'm now going to fill these up with some soil. And then I'll come back and put the seeds in. Um, I must remember to put the water in first actually after I've popped in the soil, then the seeds, and then I sprinkle more soil and then I use the spray and then I just put the lid on and then pop it back on the windowsill. So I'm just going to fill these with soil and then give them a good water, put the seeds in, etc. I'll do all of that in front of you except for the soil bit because the soil is actually in the hallway and uh, yeah it's a bit too dark to record in there so. I'll be right back, basically. And that also gives me an excuse to stretch my feet and legs, because sitting in this position is not very comfortable. And the older you get, the more in pain you feel. <laughs> so I'll be right back. I need to remember to take that too. Okay, so I've just added in the soil along with the seeds. And as you can see in here, this is where it will be. And I've also added the top layer of the soil and then sprayed it with water with my little spray. So they're all presented lovely now. Some of them will also share with others because there was quite a lot of seeds in the packet. So as you can see from here, we've got the borage and the dill, which are kind of sharing, but also borage and dill are separate. And then we've got coriander and fennel, but again, it's the fennel there and the coriander here. So some are sharing and then some have their own. And then there's the basil and chervil. And there's a chervil there, but I haven't got any extra basil. So I'm hoping more basil comes out of this one. And then I can just take cuttings and do all of that. But that's how I've mapped it all out. And I've made it so these ones here, the more flowery types, they are closest to the window, as you can see here, because when I open that up and the bees come in, then they're the closest to the flowers, whereas the more herbal ones are at the front, closest to me, because I'm going to be cooking with them. So I want to, you know, take a leaf or something and cook with it. So hopefully <laughs> this will be good enough. And I think it's good enough to actually see where everything is. and. You can also tell by the leaves or the flowers and you know things like that. So I'm hoping this goes really well and I look forward to seeing in about three to four weeks time what they will basically look like or at least see them sprouting. So some of the seeds I know already won't sprout but hopefully a lot of them do and we will see what also appears. Also, if you're thinking about starting this yourself, I suggest getting some peat-free soil, and it's the multi-compost soil as well. So they have about three weeks of food within the soil, which the uh, seeds then use to sprout. And then you'll need to remember within three to four weeks time, when they've sprouted, to put in some plant food when you're feeding them. So now we're just gonna put the lid on it which hopefully is okay. Just to move this tiny bit forward. Okay. 
yeah, hopefully that'll be okay. Also, this is a brilliant room to put them in because whenever I cook pasta or something like that, the room gets really steamy and so the water vapour will keep them nice and moist, which I know seed sproutlings really love. So, I hope you enjoyed that. We are now going to move on to the altar changeover and then also the divination reading. You'll probably see something in my litha vlog, I reckon, because that'd be, you know, a month and a half. So, yeah, litha vlog, I think, and I'll, I'll show you the progress. And I can't wait. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for so long now. Right. Okay. So I've just had a little bit of annoyance actually because I perfectly did the rest of this video and it was about 15 minutes worth and I didn't press record. So <laughs> I'm hoping that this time it's recorded something because I'm getting very tired. <laughs> Anyway, so we've moved upstairs now, which means if you hear anything in the background, like a TV soundtrack kind of going off, uh, that's just my father in the other room watching some stuff, so please do excuse that. So we've moved upstairs now because we're going to be moving on to the divination reading as well as the altar tour. So we'll start with the divination reading. Now, if you remember back in my Samhain vlog, I did a six month reading, which was basically the start of my yearly reading, because a yearly reading in divination, it literally consists of picking 12 cards to represent the 12 months of the year. But by the time you get to the sixth card, I've noticed that the future seems to be a bit less accurate because obviously the future isn't written yet. So these cards will give you clues on the most likely future for you. So I shuffled my tarot deck because I usually use a tarot deck for this and then I use oracle cards or something for sort of extra pieces of information. And I did a six card reading again for Beltane because I do one in Samhain and one for Beltane. Samhain is for the darker half of the year and then Beltane is for the lighter half of the year. So I like to think of it like that. And then all together it makes up the yearly reading. So this is a continuation of the start of the yearly reading which I started last year in Samhain. So I'd shuffle the tarot deck and I'd pick out six cards to represent the six months, which is the lighter half of the year. So it's about May to October. And I've noticed that when I was shuffling them, quite a lot of cards came out. Now that's actually okay, because you don't have to have just six cards, because it could be that your future for that month, let's just say, could go either way. So there could be two cards, like there was for mine. So it could be, your future could be this path, or it could be that path, or it could be just one card, and then it has other cards surrounding it which will contribute to the main card. You know, it could be something like that, basically. So do not worry if you get more than one card for each of the months. And i just like to point out as well, because I won't reveal the cards themselves to you, or what my reading considers of, because that's actually quite private. But I will reveal to you one or two cards that I got, mostly just one actually, and let's work it right. And it's this one here, it's the Queen of Wands, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully my camera zoomed in, but I will describe to you what it is. So this is a mushroom tarot deck, and the mushrooms here are the luminescent panelius, panelius? I think that's right. Latin words I do not know. <laughs> I'm sorry if I butchered the sounding. So it's a cluster of these yellowy mushrooms and in the centre is what looks to be a skull because it has the teeth and nose and the eyes and everything like that. And it kind of reminded me of a dragon card that I've got because very recently I've bought myself a dragon oracle deck because I work with dragons and I wanted to have a deck for them basically because I have an angel oracle deck which I use with the angels that I also work with and then I have like a multitude of other decks as well. I'll probably do like a, a tarot and oracle or a divination sort of video as well where I show all, the, all of my tools and stuff or maybe add it to a divination video so I will talk about the different tools and techniques for divination so I don't know maybe I'll make that a video closer to the darker half of the year but yeah I was looking at this card and 
before I looked at this, I actually received my Dragon Oracle deck, and it, in other words, it was delivered to me. And I thought, hey, that kind of reminds me of that dragon card that I picked out of the deck because I was doing my first reading with the Oracle deck. And it was basically this one here, Confidence. Hopefully you can see it. And if you look at them together, the yellowness and the fact that it looks like a dragon skull, the, the fact that they look very similar to each other, I just thought, that can't be a coincidence. So I think as well, because as a whole on my reading, I got the word confidence a lot, as in have confidence in your own abilities or in your craft, which I've been lacking a bit lately. So I think not only do I need to focus on having some confidence for the lighter half of the year in my craft and in myself, just pursuing things that I want to pursue without feeling a little bit held back because of my lack of confidence or something, you know, just believe in myself, basically. I think I need to focus on that for the lighter half of the year. But also, I think I'm going to be working a lot with the dragons lately, because this is the year of the dragon. So, yeah, I think I'm going to be working a lot with the dragons, and with confidence in general. So I'm really looking forward to that. The next thing we're going to move on is the altar tour. Now, during Beltane, I don't actually have that much to go on the altar. I simply just remove the little chicken bits that I've got, so the little tiny chickens, and then I add in some more lavender into the butterfly flower pots that I've got. So that is literally it, apart from swapping the spring card to the summer card, and then that's it. But I was thinking actually maybe I could add a few more things to sort of make it more Beltane-like and I haven't thought about that yet but it got me thinking about how I know that there are beginner witches and warlocks out there, although witch is a gender neutral term but yeah any warlocks as well. I know there are beginner witches and warlocks out there who feel like they have to have all of these witchy items and they feel it to be a necessity but I just want to say that that's not the case at all. Please don't have all of these tools just because they look pretty or because somebody else has them. Just get whatever resonates with you and your craft. But at the same time, don't feel like you have to get it because at the moment, you know, my altar may look a bit sparse, sort of scarce, maybe is the right word. Scarce, I think is the right word. But it still is magical because I believe in it. And in the end, belief is all that really matters. You know, you can have a smaller altar and yet it, it looks good, you know, it's nice. It doesn't have to be absolutely massive. So yeah, it, it got me thinking about that. And I thought, actually, you know what? I kind of like it the way it is. I'm not gonna add anything else. I may reshuffle some things just so it closes up the big gaps because I will admit, I'm not a fan of gaps especially big ones. I like filling them in with stuff. I'm a bit of a, a hoarder in some ways as well, which is probably actually why the dragons really like me, because recently on the internet as well, especially social media, I've been finding these new trending words, especially for book lovers. And there was one where they said, are you a bookworm or a book dragon? I thought, well, what's the difference? And a bookworm is somebody who consumes a whole load of books, like they go through loads of books. But a book dragon is somebody who hoards books, they like collecting them. They will occasionally read them, but they like collecting them more. And I think that's basically me. I'm a bit of a slow reader, unless I find a really good juicy book. But uh, yeah, I, I don't consume them like a bookworm does, I, I hoard them. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why the dragons actually like me, because they notice I like shiny objects too, and crystals. <laughs> But yes, I, I mustn't get into a habit of that. I, I need to uh, reel back the spending a bit. But yeah, I basically just added in the lavender because I'm a big fan of lavender. I really love it. It's one of my favourite flowers. That and also cherry blossoms and roses as well. I really love all three of those flowers. So yeah. Uh, and also, I just wanted to quickly mention and also slightly apologise <laughs> on the fact that I didn't really show much footage on the seed sowing section of this video. I did record the part where I was putting the seeds into the pots, 
but unfortunately it was about 25 minutes long so the footage was actually too long and I could have edited it down to 15 minutes but in the end uh, there was a few mistakes in there that I didn't really want and I also didn't really want to let anybody know, specifically the professional gardeners watching my channel. I didn't want to let them know anything that I did that was wrong. I didn't want to make them cringe basically because, um, for example, on the back of the packets they didn't specify how many seeds to put into a pot so I may have put in the whole packet into the pot. So whatever really sprouts is, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll just hope for the best really. But I'm a beginner at this, and so please do forgive me. I'm experiencing and learning gardening stuff, so... And, and this is what this channel is all about. It's basically a way for all of us who are beginners and also advanced to connect with each other and to help each other out and to teach each other. I want this to be a collaborative community kind of thing. So, <laughs> I do apologise basically for missing out that section, but I think I did reveal in about three to four weeks time, so basically in my litter vlog, that the little sproutlings, or the seeds, will be sprouting. And I am looking very much forward to that because they're going to be so cute, I reckon. And I'm a beginner at this, so uh, yeah, please do forgive me for any mistakes. But yeah, this is all about learning and having fun, so... Anyway, that's everything that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video, it really does mean a lot to me. I hope you have a lovely, magical and blessed belting, and bye for now. Good intent and then cast away